This is a summary of the open question argument, What It Isn't and What It Is, by Fred Feldman. Feldman presents two common interpretations of G. E. Moore's open question argument, which appears in section 13 of his book, Principia Ethica. The first interpretation is by Nicholas Sturgeon, and it's called the identity interpretation. This rests on the theory PH, as Feldman calls it, which is the meta-ethical theory that goodness is pleasure. So open question argument one goes like this. It is an open question whether pleasure is goodness is true. If it is an open question whether pleasure is goodness is true, then it's not the case that pleasure is goodness. If it's not the case that pleasure is goodness, then pH is false, therefore pH is false. Sturgeon says that this is a really bad argument, and that is because premise two is completely indefensible. Premise two, again, is if it is an open question whether pleasure is goodness it's, is true, then it's not the case that pleasure is goodness. Um, the openness of pleasure is goodness does not entail that pleasure does not equal goodness. So this is Sturgeon's defense. Feldman says this would be right if um, Sturgeon had the correct interpretation of the argument, which he doesn't. He thinks that this is the is of identity, but it's actually the is of predication. So he's misunderstanding. The next is Darwall, Gibbard, and Railton's self-predication interpretation. Feldman says the general idea of this interpretation, which I'm going to call D, G, and R, is this. If the meaning of good were pleasantness, then the question whether pleasantness is good would be unintelligible. So we wouldn't be able to understand it. According to D, G, and R, Moore says the question whether pleasantness is good is intelligible. We do understand it, so the meaning of good must not be pleasantness. Um, D, G, and R have a problem with the second premise. If the question whether pleasantness is good is intelligible, then good does not mean pleasantness. Their problem with that is that whether pleasantness is the meaning of good or not, it still might make sense to ask whether pleasantness is good. Feldman says this also is an implausible interpretation because there's no argument in Principia Ethica that depends essentially upon the intelligibility of a self-predicating question. So they also misunderstand. Um, Feldman gives the open question argument for real, finally, saying that it rests on the theory DD. DD, X is good equals by definition we desire to desire X. So skipping ahead of all the intermediary arguments, Feldman says, a question is open if it's possible for a reasonable, competent speaker to fully understand the question and every word in it, but to still be in doubt about the correct answer. Real quick, we have question 9 and question 10. Is it the case that every pleasant thing is pleasant? And is it the case that every pleasant thing is good? These are two separate questions. Um, Amorian would say that question 9 is not open, but question 10 is. Therefore, they don't mean the same thing. So we have the final open question argument. Question 10 is an open question, but question 9 is not. If question 10 is open, but question 9 is not, then Q10 does not mean the same as Q9. If Q10 does not mean the same as Q9, then good does not mean the same as pleasant. If good does not mean the same as pleasant, then pH is false. Therefore, pH is false. And pH, again, is the theory that pleasure equals goodness. Why the open question argument? Moore wanted to prove that we can't sub derive sub substantive conclusions in axiology from claims about the synonymy of good with some other expression. So basically what he wanted to say was that if he was right about this, no one can force us to accept that pleasure is the only good or that the good is the desired or any other um, any other formulation of that kind on the pretense that that is the very meaning of the word good.